Greetings, and welcome to Christ Our Redeemer AME Church. We are the virtual church serving Christ and the community. We worship each Sunday under the anointed leadership of Minister Gilbert Ruffin, Jr. and Minister James Turner, Jr. We are so glad you decided to join us today. So sit back, relax, get ready, get ready, get ready to hear a word from the Lord. Good morning, Christ our Redeemer. I am so anxious to worship with you corporately this morning and to give God praises for everything that he's been doing. Let us lift his name and glorify him together. Here we go. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, yes, rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, yes, rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise, yeah. Say it one more time, say oh, let it rise. Come on, Christ our Redeemer. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord, yes, rise among us. Let the praise of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King, let it rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the glory of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king let it rise among us let it rise let the glory of the lord let it rise let the glory of the lord let it rise let the praises of our king let Let the songs of the Lord, let it rise. Oh, let the joy of the King, let it rise, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Oh. From my soul, oh, oh. From every portion of your being, let your worship sing. Praises to our Lord, let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Good morning and good afternoon. 
my brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor James C. Turner Jr. Pastor Gilbert A. Ruffin Jr. will be bringing forth our word on this Pentecost Sunday, the birth of the church uh, found in Acts. We are excited. We are glad. We are elated. I know I use those adjectives all the time, but I, I just, it's a, it's a genuine feeling that we are here together in a virtual corner near this collection, this uh, community in which God has called us into uh, during this time. We pray that you had a blessed week. We know that there may have been some struggles, some strife, some heartaches, and some pains, but we pray that you had a sliver, slither of hope during this week uh, that you can hold on to to get you through to the next week. And we pray that that uh, small amount of hope is uh, uh, multiplied exponentially so that this week that you're in uh, right now is, a, is the ble uh, most blessed week that you've ever had. And so my brothers and sisters, we are thankful to Sister Staples for singing our our, our worship song, Let It Rise, Let It Rise, Let It Rise. Uh, we too should be rising, our, letting our voices rise to God in worship and in praise, letting our voices rise against uh, uh, evilness in high places, letting our voices rise to advocate for others and letting our voices rise to show love to one another. And so I pray that uh, in our chats uh, this Sunday morning or afternoon or whenever you're watching it, you, we are able to connect with you. Just give us a, uh, a hello. Let us know where you're watching from so we can reach back out to you and, and build that genuine community through our virtual services. And so my brothers and sisters, let us center ourselves in this worship service through prayer. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, dear God of the universe, dear God of our ancestors, dear God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, we come to say thank you in this moment. We say thank you that we're able to worship together, albeit it's not in a manner in which we typically will worship with one another, but we thank God for this, this uh, mode of worship through digital platforms. We say thank you for the life, the lives, those persons who are watching with us on this day. We say thank you for giving them a reasonable portion of health and strength to continue to do the work that you've called them to do. We know that this week may not have been the best week. We know that for some, it was the best week ever, ever. but we still give your name all the praise, the honor, and the glory. We come to say thank you for the zeal and passion that you have placed upon Pastor Ruffin's heart for the word and the work and the ministry that you called him and us to do here at Christ our Redeemer. We pray that you gird him up, uh, ease his mind, allow for his uh, personality to shine through the pastoral preaching moment that you've given to him and you placed on his heart and his mind. And through his hand that he has written a sermon that will stir us up on this Pentecost Sunday, the birth of the church where all persons were on one accord. And we pray that at this moment in our lives, in this uh, moment in history, that a new Pentecost takes place so that all of us understand that we are in this work together to build the beloved community in which you've called us to live into. We pray that there are no more margins. There are no more oppressed persons. Everybody's living into who you've called us to be. And we know to, to live into who you've called us to be, we must have connection with you. And so we pray if there's anyone, excuse me, under the sound of our voice that does not know you fully or needs to repair the relationship with you or needs to connect to a church or just needs prayer, that they reach out to us and we will make sure, we will make sure, we will make sure that we reach back out to them immediately so we can ask them, what do you need from the church? And they will respond with their needs and desires and we will meet them at their needs and walk with them along this journey. And so we pray that, uh, that you uh, give us the Holy Ghost power to do what you've called us to do in this moment. We thank God for 
our Episcopal leadership. We thank God for our presiding elder. We thank God for the mighty cloud of witnesses that are surrounding us day by day, cheering us on, giving us wisdom, and making sure that we understand that they are with us at all times. In your son's matchless name, we pray. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, we are now uh, so excited that we are concluding our journey through Dr. Proctor's book, um, My Moral Odyssey, with chapter seven, which is building, uh, excuse me, pursuing genuine community. Chapter seven in our book is Pursuing Genuine Community. Uh, myself and Pastor Ruffin will be on uh, Facebook Live at seven o'clock on Wednesday to talk about the last chapter and to put a nice bow on the book and to talk about what our takeaways are, what we want to see for the church and what we pray that you saw um, in the book uh, related to our discussions and what you've read. So we pray that you join us on Wednesday at seven o'clock uh, for our last discussion. And we have something, uh, something unique in store for June and we will talk about that on Wednesday or next Sunday uh, before we launch it so that uh, everyone is able to become and be a part of our new Wisdom Wednesday series. And we are also thankful and grateful for those who have given uh, tithes and offerings towards Christ our Redeemer, uh, whether it be for their own uh, tithing journey or for our uh, outreach efforts with James Madison Middle School here in Prince George's County, Maryland. We say thank you for those who have given, those who have uh, approached myself or Pastor Ruffin uh, regarding in-kind donations like book bags and uh, clothing articles. Uh, we are, uh, we'll be talking to the uh, administrator at the school uh, before the school year starts to see what kind of impact this, uh, we can have at the school, whether it be through mentoring, through financial means, through in-kind donations, or all three are something totally different. But we're glad and thankful uh, for your, your, your commitment to Christ and to the commitment that you all have to the community. And so uh, for in order for us to continue to do these uh, our outreach, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, outreach missions and to continue to pour into the life of the community, uh, we, we uh, are um, just uh, appreciative of your tithes and donations, uh, which you are able to give in four, uh, uh, four different ways. Uh, the first way is through our Tithely uh, link on our website page, through Givelify, through Cash App, and through the United States Postal Service. All four uh, um, modes are on the screen right now, as well as in our chat. So we're just glad, we are excited, we are thankful uh, that you thought it not robbery to pour into Christ our Redeemer AME Church. And we know and we are thankful that God is making us and we are good stewards over what God has given us. And so let us pray over our offering and our tithes so that we are in right relationship with God has given, entrusted with us, and then now we are returning back to God. Dear God, we thank you for the tithes and offerings we have received. We say thank you for those who uh, have a heart to give or are not able to, we pray that you, uh, you pour into them what they stand in need of. And may what you've given unto us, we continue to give unto the community. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now we are at our uh, scripture reading and we're going to do something different. Our scripture reading uh, this Sunday will be done by no none other than Pastor Ruffin's oldest son, uh, just Brother Justin Ruffin. Uh, so he hear ye him uh, reading our scripture. Good morning. Today I'll be reading Acts 2, verses 1 through 4, from the New Revised Standard Version for your hearing. And it reads, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The Word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. 
We are thankful for Brother Ruffin reading our scripture. We are proud of the work that he's doing. Uh, keep up the good work. I know your dad is ex excited that you are, uh, you are using your gifts here at Christ our Redeemer. And so now at our, uh, our sermonic moment, uh, we are uh, glad and thankful for Sister Opal Staples ushering us into our sermonic moment. Uh, and we have, we're excited and glad for the, the word that uh, Pastor Ruffin will be bringing forth for us to hear. Uh, so the next words, that, uh, next person you'll hear after Sister Staples will be none other than Pastor Gilbert A. Ruffin Jr. Be blessed. Listen to the words. This is not the time to be distracted. This is not the time to go off course. This is not the time to lose your focus. Got a work to do for the Lord. And you cannot afford to lose your way. You come too far from where you started. So please don't let the time you've sown be wasted on things that you'd later regret, wishing you never had. Once you realize it wasn't worth it, your destiny is too important to give up for anything. This is not the time to be distracted. No, no, no. This is not the time to go off course. Yeah. This is not the time to lose your focus. Got a work to do for the Lord. And you cannot afford to lose your way. You come too far from where you started from. So please don't let the time you've sown be wasted on things that you later regret. Wishing you never had Once you realize it wasn't worth it Your own destiny Is too important to give up for anything Your own destiny Is too important to give up for anything, anything, hey, yeah. Said it ain't worth that skirt. No, it ain't worth that tie. No, it ain't, no, it ain't. Said it ain't worth no girl. Said it ain't worth that guy, no. Your destiny, your destiny, your destiny is too important to give up for anything, anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting on the other side of temptation, waiting on the other side of this test. Is everything you ever dreamed, everything you pray for, everything he promised you that you get. Waiting on the other side of temptation, waiting on the other side of this test. Is everything you ever dreamed, everything you pray for, everything he promised you that you get. So hold on and don't let go, hold on. We just like close, hold on, and never give up. Hold on, hey, hold on, hey, hold on, and never give up. Hold on, never give me hold on, and don't give up. Hold on, hey, hold on, say, it's only a matter of time, cause I can see the finish line. Your victory is days away, so I'm getting ready. It's been a long time coming, but I know that it's coming for sure. I made a promise to the Lord, yeah, yeah. Waiting on the 
other side of temptation, waiting on the other side of this test. It's everything you ever dreamed, everything you prayed for, everything he promised you. Oh, thank you so very much, uh, Sister Staples, for that wonderful sermonic song. This is the day of your destiny. This is the day of your destiny. Your destiny is too important to give up for anything. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Your destiny is too important to give up for anything. Praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, this is... Uh, a, a, a day of celebration. Uh, we are at one of the pinnacles of Christianity, if you will, uh, as we celebrate this day of Pentecost, uh, the, this, the day of God's dispensation of his Holy Spirit upon the church through uh, Jesus who mediates a new covenant with God for the body of Christ. This is a day of celebration. I'm telling somebody this is a day of celebration. We are to be excited about what today represents in Christendom. This is a special day for all Christians around the world. And we are, as we are washed anew in covenant with God, somebody ought to give God praise for the great things that he has done. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah right now. Hallelujah hallelujah for the great things God has done, sending his only begotten son to show us the way to, to pay the debt of our sins, to, to renew us in covenant with our heavenly father and fulfilling the promise and providing the gift of the Holy Spirit. We certainly thank God for this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, we thank God uh, uh, thank the Lord for the opportunity to come together virtually uh, in this space, in this, in this moment of worship, to hear and to understand what God is saying to us this Sunday, what this Sunday means for each of us. Today, we want to look at what this Sunday means for, for each of us and discuss the church from the perspective of Pentecost. And today, we want to look at and review what this means for us from the sermon title and subject, we are the church. That's right. Somebody touch yourself and say, we are the church. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, who was born of a virgin Mary, God, lived in, in, and suffered on the Pontius Pilate, God, showed us the way, God, was crucified, dead and buried, but rose again on the third day, God, and left us a promise, left us as disciples of Christ, his followers, God, a promise of the Holy Spirit and fulfill the promise. God fulfilled it and, and fills us up even now through the Holy Spirit, guides us and comforts us, an advocate for us on our behalf, uh, says words to God that we can't even enunciate, that we can't even think of. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your power, God, that rests in us, God, that, that helps us to accomplish all that you set in course of purpose for our life. We thank you, God, for what you're doing even right now in this service, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for this day of celebration of Pentecost. God, we thank you for what it means in Christendom. But more importantly, God, we thank you for what it means in our lives. Thank you, God, for blessing us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray that someone today would feel the Holy Ghost, would be infilled by the Holy Ghost, would know the Holy Ghost up close and personal, know you up close and personal, would, would, would be saved, God, by you, knowing that it's the Holy Ghost that helps to, helps to save us, knowing that it's the Holy Ghost who helps to transform us, knowing that it's the Holy Ghost who will save us, God, through, through your power, God, your power. Keep them now, and God, we pray that you keep each of us, God, as we worship in this moment, as we celebrate you, God, and we celebrate your church, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I don't know what I would do without the Holy Ghost, I, 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 the Holy Spirit. I tell you the truth. Today, we want to discuss the church from this perspective of Pentecost. Uh, I want to thank, I want to start by thinking, I know the Holy Ghost is moving. I want to start by thinking my eldest son, Justin, for reading today's scripture. I am so proud of him. 
And I'm so proud of the fact that he is joining us here in ministry effort and reading the scriptures and pray that he'll just keep on pushing uh, in his life and, and recognizing what God is doing in his life. Today, I, I, I am just happy. I'm Holy Ghost happy. Uh, but but I want to reread these scriptures and emphasize something for your hearing. Uh, will you allow me to do that? I just want to emphasize a few of the words. Uh, and this is Acts 2. Uh, uh, chat, uh, verses one through four. And so let me read this and emphasize a few of the words. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together. Somebody said they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound. Somebody say a sound like a rush, the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. <laughs> Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. Somebody say appeared. Uh, and, and, and a tongue rested on each of them. Somebody say each of them. All of them were filled. Somebody say all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. Somebody say they began to speak as the Spirit gave the, them ability. Somebody said gave them ability. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for his word. Amen, somebody. Repeat after me. We are the church. We are the church. I want to thank uh, Sister Opal uh, for, for today's sermonic selection uh, and, and ushering in the sermonic moment. Today, as we examine these scriptures, I pray that we all come to understand that we are the church. First, let us examine what Pentecost is uh, and, and for us as the church uh, and from a historical perspective. Um, Pentecost comes from the Greek uh, term Pentecoste, which means 50th. And in this case, the 50th day, uh, the seventh Sunday, if you will, uh, from Easter Sunday. The term Pentecost also represents the 50th day after Passover uh, in the Jewish tradition, uh, which celebrated as uh, the wheat harvest or the festival of weeks, uh, Shavuot, if you will, I pray I'm saying it right, Shavuot, uh, for the first fruits of the harvest and later for the remembrance of the law uh, given to the people or given from by God through Moses to the people. Uh, and so that, that would have taken place on Mount Sinai. And so, so Luke is proclaiming, now he's proclaiming uh, Sunday, uh, 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 or Pentecost, if you will, as the day that the community of Christian believers uh, uh, are ushered into or, or are baptized, if you will, into the realm of the spirit uh, and into new covenant with God through its mission as he begins in verse one with the words, when the day of Pentecost had come. When the day of Pentecost had come. The promise of the comforter through Jesus is being fulfilled on Pentecost. All of the Jewish nation uh, and the converts of Judaism are gathered in Jerusalem to, to witness this event as the Christian church is, is birthed. Now, now they're there for different reasons, but the reality is they become a part of the witness of the Christian church. Some scoff, but others come to believe. The early church uh, refer to this entire 50-day period, beginning with Easter, uh, as Pentecost. We refer to this time or this period of time as the Easter tide season, if you will, as the community of Christian believers. We celebrate the resurrection and ascension of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit upon God's church. The first thing we note uh, in the scripture, in the scripture that has been read for you hearing in Acts 2, the first thing that we note is that the entire community of Christian believers or the church are all together on one accord, as the King James Version states. They're, there, they're gathered together on one accord. They're of, they're of one heart, one mind, and one spirit. Uh, we are the church. And as the church, we come together on, uh, uh, on, on, on one accord virtually this Sunday and in this space to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, you know, some say this is the new normal. This is the new reality of who we are. Some will try to go back to the way things were, but I heard Bishop John Bryan said, I dare you to go back. I think that we are seeing a new experience, a new normal 
in our relevance and in our celebration as, as the church. So this Christian space, this virtual space represents a new normal for us. It is a space where we all come together on one accord. Somebody say amen. Sir. Somebody say hallelujah. Today, we, we come together to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ each Sunday. Each Sunday, we celebrate Jesus as our Lord and Savior under the unction of the Holy Spirit. But on this Sunday, this Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate the promise and gift of the Holy Spirit upon God's uh, church. The Bible notes that there are uh, 120 disciples of Christ that were constantly devoting themselves in prayer in the upper room, awaiting the promise of God as Jesus instructed. Somebody said they are waiting patience. They are waiting the promise of God. This upper room is thought to be the same place where the disciples partook of the Lord's Supper with Jesus as described in Luke 22, 12. And this is where the disciples of Jesus are now staying in Jerusalem. There are 120 disciples. Include They include the 11 apostles plus the newly elected apostle Matthias, uh, certain women. Uh, they include Mary, the mother of Jesus, they include, uh, as well as Jesus's brothers, amongst others, 120 disciples uh, are there in the upper room, and they're waiting on the promise of God. And, and during these days, Peter stood up and amongst the believers, and he proclaimed the gospel. And on, but on this Pentecost Sunday, uh, we, we, we see that the scriptures say something happened. Say, the, the scriptures say, suddenly, <laughs> So the, the Bible says suddenly, somebody say sudden, suddenly they said, that the, the Bible says that suddenly uh, from heaven there came a sound, somebody say a sound, a sound came from heaven, this sound was like the rush of a violent wind, uh, the sound was audible, it was tangible, and it was perceptible, all of the church experienced it, not only did the church hear it, but those gathered around Jerusalem heard it as well. And they came rushing to see what was going on. Some, something was happening in the church. Somebody said, we are the church. Something is happening with you and I today uh, as we experience and are baptized in the Holy Spirit. That should be something audible. That should be something tangible. That should be something perceptible as we come together and worship our God. That should be something audible. That should be something tangible. And that should be something perceptible working in and through us as we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Greek terms for wind or spirit of God uh, is, uh, is pneuma. And likewise, the Hebrew term is, is, uh, is ruah. And so what the church experienced filled the room where they were all setting. The sound was like wind or pneuma and it filled the room where they all were. It filled all were who were in the room as well. They heard it and the sound filled their ears and their bodies. They reverberated with the sound and they heard it. They heard it and it filled them and God's spirit is perceptible and it's real. They knew it was real. And we as a church today, you and I, wherever we are, God is perceptible and real because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The next thing that we note in the scripture, uh, or from these scriptures, if you will, is that the God's Spirit appears as divided tongues, as a fire and a tongue rested on each of them. Somebody said on each of them. Now we see here that the Holy Spirit rested uh, upon each of them individually and collectively as they gathered as one. We are the church. As we gather this day as one, one heart, one mind, one accord, we are individually and collectively filled with the Holy Spirit. We are filled and receive God's power. Somebody said power power to walk right, power to talk right, power to act right, power to live right. Jeremiah says it this way in Jeremiah 20 and 9, that even if I say that I will not mention or speak anymore in his name, <laughs> hallelujah, there within me, there's something like a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in and I cannot. Uh, the fire rested on each of them. 
and 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 it rested on each of them and 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 it rests in each of us today it rests as we receive the holy spirit we can't contain it for it is like fire shut up in our bones all of us we have to tell somebody we can't help it we can't keep it to ourselves all of us as a church are filled with the Holy Spirit. And because we are filled with the Holy Spirit, like the 120 disciples, we can't keep it to ourselves. Look, 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 look. Look at what happens next in the scripture. They all began to speak as the Spirit gave them ability. They all began to speak as the Spirit gave them ability. They couldn't keep it to themselves. The Bible says that the church began to speak in other languages that those who that they encountered could understand. The crowds who were bewildered, astonished, and amazed, but they understood what the church was putting down. They understood what, what the disciples were saying to them, just as they'll understand us today. And they should understand us today as we are sharing the good news. They understood what was being said to them through the power of the Holy Spirit through the church. And it didn't matter if they were young or old, they, they understood. It didn't matter if they were Generation X or baby boomers, they understood. It didn't matter if they were from Kurdistan or Kentucky, they understood. It didn't matter if they were from Iran or Iowa, they understood. It didn't matter if they were from Iraq or Indiana, they understood. It didn't matter if they were Elamites, uh, Hebrews, Greeks, uh, Africans, uh, Turkish, Arab, or Asian. They understood what God was saying. We are the church, and as disciples of Christ, uh, our mission remains the same, to love one another and to keep God's word. Jesus says by this, everyone will know that we are his disciples. We are called to heal the sick and let the world know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, we are called to share the good news to the uttermost parts of the earth. The advocate is with us forever. That the spirit of truth, uh, this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But we are the church. We know him because he abides in us. The advocate teaches us daily, renews us daily, revives us daily, refreshes us daily. We are the church and we live and move and have our being through the Holy Spirit. We are sustained through this power and through prayer and through the dwelling uh, in God's word. And as the Holy Spirit guides us, uh, the Holy Spirit helps us to know uh, what to pray to God. The Holy Spirit helps us to thank God for what he gives, for it is the Spirit who opens our eyes and enlightens us so that we see it. Not only does the Holy Spirit help us to pray, the Holy Spirit helps us to speak to and through us just as he did on the day of Pentecost. We are the church. God is still speaking. God is still blowing a fresh wind of his spirit upon us. God is still lighting upon us and in us like a tongue of fire. It's like fire shut up in our bones. Uh, I can't keep it to myself. You can't keep it to yourself. We can't keep it to ourselves. We got to tell somebody that Jesus lives because he lives in us. In these days, God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Our sons and daughters shall prophesy. Our young men shall see visions. Our old men shall see dreams. Our, 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 our young women will see visions. Our, our older women will see will have dreams, dream dreams. God is still pouring out his spirit upon us and we shall prophesy. God will show wonders in heaven above and signs here on earth. Signs and wonders God will show. We are the church and we got power. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power to proclaim liberty in Christ. Power to witness to the uttermost parts of the earth. Power until the kingdom of God is fulfilled here on earth. We are the church, and on this Pentecost Sunday, we are reminded that the best is still yet to come as we continue to our Christian journey. We are called for such a time as this. Keep on keeping on, keep on prophesying, keep on speaking truth to power, keep on witnessing to God's goodness and God's grace, keep on fighting a good fight of faith, run the race, keep the faith, and in God's own time, we shall see what the end brings. We are the church. We are the church.
Amen, somebody. Amen, amen, and amen again. The doors of God's church are open. The good news has been preached. The promise of the Holy Spirit is yours today. All you have to do is to accept the gift, accept the gift giver in your heart. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Give us your hand, but more importantly, give God your heart today. If you don't know Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior, click on the link in the comments box, in the comments section. Just fill out the information. Pastor and I, uh, Turner and I are waiting to hear from you. We can't wait to hear from you, and we are praying uh, and, and pray to pray our salvation. We're praying even for you right now. We're praying even right now for you to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, to be saved by the power of God. We, 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 we thank God for you. We thank God that you will consider all that has been shared, especially on this Pentecost Sunday. Now, in, in early Christendom, um, they, would, they would baptize on Easter Sunday and they would baptize on Pentecost Sunday. We pray that you receive the baptism today and, and, and contact us, receive salvation today and contact us. And we will pray to pray our salvation with you. We will ensure that you are baptized, not only by water, but by, baptized by the spirit of God. Now, let me, um, let, let me just say, if you already know Christ as your Lord and Savior, we pray today that you will rededicate your faith uh, to, the, to God today. We pray that you'll walk in the power of the Holy Spirit today. Let the advocate and comforter uh, be yours. Let the advocate and comforter help guide you in your life and guide your life today. You don't have to try to fight this fight alone. You don't have to try to fight this battle at all because the battle is not yours. Give your or rededicate your faith to Christ and, and see what God will do. God is waiting on you to turn back towards him. And God is waiting on you to rededicate your faith. Uh, and, and, and God will do the rest. God will, God will bless you uh, mightily. Uh, we have seen time and time again in our own lives. And I, and I hear Bishop Davis's voice in my ear ringing loud and clear. I dare you to trust God. And it, maybe you are already saved. Maybe you are already living in faith but you don't have a church home. Uh, that is, you know, we, we, you, you need a church home. You, you, it's a real challenge to walk this walk of faith and, and to be homeless, uh, you know, be homeless, spiritually homeless. And so we are waiting for you to join us here at Christ our Redeemer. We are committed to serving Christ in the community. Uh, and, and that includes, that is us. We are committed to serving one another as well as the greater community, our world. The, and we are committed to, to Christ, serving Christ. So if that's you, you're in the right place at the right time to, to, to join the church today. We're waiting on you. Click on the link in the comments section or visit our website at uh, https uh, colon forward slash forward slash at Christ our Redeemer AME uh, CWW.org. And we're waiting to hear from you. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the word that you shared this Sunday. We thank you, God, how you've used, God, this vessel mightily. We thank you, God, for what you're, done, what you're doing and what you've done for us through the gift of your Holy Spirit. God, we pray that someone today would receive you as Lord and Savior, God. We, we pray that someone today would rededicate that faith. We pray that someone today would join your church by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, do it. God, turn their eyes, open their eyes, their, their spiritual eye towards you, open their heart towards you, and God, we'll be forever grateful for the great things that you're doing in their lives and in your church today. Thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, God, right now for your Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday. And God, we thank you for what you're doing in the lives of those who are considering God and, and, and even confessing right now you as Lord and Savior. God, we look forward to the great things that you're going to continue to do in us all as your church. Because God, we are the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, saints, I pray that you enjoy the rest of your day. We pray that you'll continue to commemorate this gift of the Holy Spirit 
uh, on this day of Pentecost. It is. It has been a wonderful time. Uh, as Pastor Turner said earlier, don't forget this this, this Wednesday, this Wisdom Wednesday, uh, as we explore the last chapter of the book, uh, My Moral Odyssey by Samuel Proctor, chapter seven, uh, believing in a world of purpose. From you know, this is the last, the last uh, chapter of this book uh, and in this series of My Moral Odyssey. So we pray that you'll join us this Wednesday at seven o'clock. Uh, we'll be on Facebook Live and, and you can, you know, we pray that you get the book as well and read along with us because it'll be a blessing to your life. Now let's have a final word of prayer. Thank you, God, for restoring us. Thank you, God, for renewing us. Thank you, God, for keeping us. Thank you, God, for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your beloved Son, God, your only begotten Son that you, God, uh, uh, allowed us to experience and allow us to continue to experience God as the living God in us. God, thank you for being all that you are to us and all that you've done to us. God, we trust you. We hold fast and hold firm uh, by the power of your might. Now, God, present us. You're the only one who can, who can never leave us lonely or never leave us alone. Thank you for uh, pre pre presenting us faultless before your throne, God, as we strive to love one another and to keep your word. God, we thank you. Let your glory, your majesty, your dominion, and your power, and most importantly, God, your love, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen and amen again. God bless you. We thank you for joining us today. We'll see you Wednesday. Amen.